we can start. Sure. Okay, Christian, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. A warm welcome. I'm I'm really pleased that I had a fear the first, like, what's only four people are going to join, and then I had the second fear that 200 people would join. This is just perfect. It's a perfect <laughs> smaller group uh, for this first kind of webinar. Um, before I start, I'd like to uh, give a special welcome to Petra, of course, who has been inviting us to this meeting as it's in actually the one chairing the meeting and, and controlling the meeting. So a special thank you to Petra for, for hosting the meeting. And I'd also like to welcome uh, Beata Kashuba baker uh, who's the regional um, director for Little League Europe-Africa region. Um, before I start presenting myself, we have about 45 slides. I have no idea if this is going to take 45 minutes or an hour or whatever, but we will record this and it will be somehow publicized uh, later. We do have uh, input from two of my colleagues as well later. It's uh, Francois Colette from, from France and Wojtek from uh, Czechia. And they will also give some information uh, as we move through this presentation. Uh, myself, uh, as you see on the screen, my name is uh, Christian Palvia. I am the uh, Little League District Administrator for Sweden Little League since 2006. I'm also part of the WBSC Europe Board of Directors, the Executive Board, and I represent um, Europe and Africa on the Little League International Board of Directors as a field director currently. Um, so without any further ado, I'd just like to point out that please mute your microphones. If it's, if it's anything you want to say, um, you can put something down in the chat window, which we will follow. And in the end, we will, of course, have questions and answers. Uh, but if you do have any questions during the presentation, just put something in the chat, and I will try to catch it and uh, stop the presentation so that uh, you can get answers to the questions, or we'll do it at, at the end. So. Um, the agenda for this meeting, we will start to give a background about Little League. Um, we will give some background about the age groups, which could be different. This is gonna be a presentation that really caters to um, somebody who's never been with Little League before and wants to know more. Also some information about the Little League program in 2024. But we will dive into about Little League, the background of the, of the um, organization, uh, we will talk about the age group, the geographical boundaries, which are uh, special for Little League, uh, the district administrator. Uh, and then we're going to do the best practices from Czechia and some from France. And just like some examples of how they do Little League in their different countries that work well for them. We will talk about the Little League tournament in 2024, some of the education and training uh, manuals that Little League can provide. And also a little thing about the, the Little League and WBC Europe agreement in the end. So um, shortly about Little League, everybody knows about the tournament that they have every year, the World Series. But first and foremost, Little League is a volunteer neighborhood community program that wants to focus on kids learning life lessons through playing baseball and softball which is basically what all of us clubs try to do in Europe. We want to have as many kids as possible. We want to have them playing baseball and softball, learn something while they do it. And if they can play a lot of games in the way and become better baseball players, that's, that's a huge bonus as well. Um, Little League is played in about 6,500 communities across 80 countries all over the world. And we do have the World Series, which is mostly what's on everybody's minds. The tournament season that goes from the countries to the European tournament to the World Series tournaments. Um, but I do like to stress here that Little League is not a national team program. It's not for national teams. It is for groups or local teams or regional teams that play together all through. It's, it's not supposed to be a program for national teams. We have the World Cups for that. So uh, Little League is, is, is a community-based program that offers a great tournament experience. The headquarters, which are pictured here, uh, is in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The organization was founded in, in 1939. It's a volunteer-driven organization. We have a we have huge a lot of volunteers here on this Zoom call, 
but it, we do we do have a strong competent staff of about 100 plus employees um and those are spread across both in the headquarters in Williamsport, but also across the five U.S. regions and the four international regions. So Beata, who's on the call, and Bart and a few other people, Aneta, are working for the Little League staff here in, in Europe. Each region consists of multiple districts, which basically in Europe is a country. Um, it's a geographical area, usually encompassing about 10 to 20 leagues. And leagues are usually clubs, programs, or, you know, areas. So each each um, district or each country in Europe, they have this district administrator who serves as the liaison between the local teams, leagues, and the regional center, which is also a key component in making a good little league program in, in your countries. So why little league? Um, it's basically, if we take our local community baseball softball programs that we have in our respective countries, whether it is Croatia or Sweden or Denmark or Romania, Bulgaria, wherever, we could leverage the programs that we do have with the resources of what is the largest international youth program in sports. We can get some international cooperation and learning from other countries. Uh, we have the option to participate in the national tournament program, both for teams and for umpires, give them some possibilities for international exposures. Little League allows, especially in Europe, allows flexibility to operate the program in a way that works for them. And we will see two examples of that uh, closely uh, in this presentation. But it gives us a lot of flexibility as long as we listen and, you know, are transparent about what is it that we want to do in our different countries. And what's been a focus for the last, I would say, 10, 15 years is, it, is that it's important to have this connection between Little League and the respective national federation. And that's something that's really positive for us here in Europe. So Little League, we, they have, they or we, I'm going to say both they and we throughout the presentation because I am sitting here on dual chairs. Um, free training and education materials, rule books, online resources, um, videos, umpire training, manuals, seminars, clinics for both. League officers like myself, coaches who, who coach baseball and softball, uh, umpires, other volunteers. Um, they have a free rule book app. With regular updates, so basically you have the rule book in, in the in your phone, you know, while you're at the field. The boundaries of each little league are protected by little league, so there's not another program that come in and say, "Hey, now we're little league Sweden here." The original little league will have their it's protected as long as they have a good dialogue with little league international. And and all local little leagues act or the countries we, we have this voice of democratic procedure in regards to rules and regulations we have what we call the international congress uh, which i will come back to in a few minutes here so about little league europe africa um we have a regional center in kutna poland beautiful facility we have a full-time staff there led by beata kashuba baker uh, who's the regional director. We host a few of the uh, Little League tournaments each year on site, not all. Uh, most tournaments are at other sites in the European Union. Uh, for 2024, we will host both the Little League baseball tournament and the Little League softball tournament, which is a great thing because we will offer both the, the kids, both the boys and the girls, the same kind of tournament experience by having both those tournaments in this beautiful facility in, in Kutna, Poland. The facility is also open or available as practice venues for, for camps, etc. You just have to coordinate with them with them in advance uh, to make sure that the facility is you know ready to be used and uh, that is open, not double booked or something. It is a coordinated center for all of the little league regions here in Europe and Africa, and the region itself is always represented on the little league international board of the directors by a field director, which is a district administrator voted in by its peers. And currently I'm the field director for, for Europe and Africa. So if we, we go down and see who do we have you know, registered for, for, for Little League in, within the 
confines of, of WBSC Europe. We have about 21 countries that are, you know, chartered or affiliated with Little League. Um, and you see them on the list here from Austria to, and Belgium down to Ukraine and United Kingdom. Currently, in 2023, those 21 countries combined to have a total of, of 653 teams registered, uh, most of them in baseball, and uh, 123 uh, softball teams. And we can say that out of the 21 countries, 17 are active, actively registering teams uh, in baseball, and seven of them are actively registering teams uh, in softball. We made some modifications to the registration uh, process um, due to the agreement with WBC Europe and Little League, which hopefully will lead these 653 teams to always be above 700. Uh, because 700 is a number that you will hear throughout this presentation that's been crucially important for WBC Europe and for Little League when it comes to the development agreement that we have. And this uh, webinar is one way of us trying to get more understanding for the whole process to make sure that we can always have above 700 teams, at least 700 teams registered from Europe um, in, with Little League International. I'm just gonna check the chat to see if we have two questions here. Nope, perfect, thank you. No questions so far. <laughs> I'm gonna skip ahead and we're gonna see with the um, the age groups. So um, Little League, they have uh, different age groups, which are not really um, connected to the um, European age groups as we have, but I do have a figure. It's not the nicest figure, but they will show you um, how it could be translated into our different segments. Hopefully it's, it's somewhat correct. So they have uh, six age groups in total. Um, the ones that are in bold, Little League Major, uh, Intermediate 50-70, um, Junior Division and Senior Division, those are the age groups that we have a tournament in. But they also have a T-ball um, program and they also have a minor league program, which is like for the smaller kids. These age groups are from age four. So T-ball is from age four to seven and it's all the folks on fun, fitness and fundamentals. The minor league is the uh, from the five to 11 uh, league age, machine, coach, player pitch. Then we have the little league major division, which is the, the focus uh, tournament for, for little league. It's basically the under 12 um, uh, tournament with a play from the equivalent of a softball field with a 60 foot uh, diamond and 46 uh, feet uh, pitching distance. In the intermediate, uh, they grow the field somewhat to 70 feet uh, between the bases, and they have a pitching distance of 50 feet. And from juniors, seniors above, is regular baseball diamonds, or regular diamonds as well in, in softball. The intermediate division is only for baseball. Um, and when I say league age, it's, it's not equivalent of what we call uh, the age group that we have. They don't, uh, Little League don't dictate uh, the age by the birth, by the birth year. It actually is divided by the school year. So the next figure will hopefully give us an understanding of, of how it corresponds to the WBSC Europe age groups. So if, if you focus on the middle, the middle part of the screen, where you have the, uh, the timeline from born in 2006 to the timeline of 2014, you have the baseball, uh, 18 and under, you have the baseball 15 and under, and the baseball 12 and under in, in blue and yellow. And you have the softball 18 and under, softball 15 and under, and softball 12 and under underneath. That, those are the age groups for WBSC Europe. So on the top of the screen, you have the Little League, their Little League um, uh, age groups, which are the Little League uh, is actually from the players who are born from the 1st of September in 2011 to the 31st of August in, in 2014. So for baseball, the age group is split always on the 1st of September. Uh, another thing that I would like to point out to everybody here is that in Europe, we're really uh, flexible, usually with the ages, you can get like a 
waiver. I have a kid who's somewhat older. Can he play or she play? Little League are, are strict. If, if, if you're within this age group, you can play. But if you're older, you're not allowed to play in the tournaments. So correspondingly, you do have that Little League baseball is basically under 12, plus the players who are born, well, like three months older than, than under 12, if you look at the WBC Europe age groups. The intermediate division is basically under 13, plus a few months, plus of those players who are three more months uh, older. The Junior League uh, baseball age group is 14 and under, and the Senior League age group in baseball are 16 and under. So I hope that that kind of this picture hopefully sheds some light on how the Little League league age groups compare to the WBC Europe age groups. And when it comes to softball, the uh, the uh, Little League softball is basically under 13. The Little League uh, Junior League softball is under 15. And the Senior League softball is under 17. For softball, they do have the whole calendar year um, as the uh, target dates. But for baseball, it shifted uh, on, on September 1st, following the school year. And the reason for this is that that's how they do it in the States. Um, the USA softball, they have the same age groups or and as well with, with uh, baseball, other baseball programs. They, they do the same kind of you know division following the school year. So that's the logic that we have to work around in terms of getting the, um, the, the, the players in the correct age groups in, in Europe. I'm going to talk about what we call the league, which is basically the, the geographical boundary for, uh, for a league. So Little League, uh, in Little League, the league is a geographical area with a clear and concise boundary. So in the United States, depending on in, in if you're in rural Montana, it can be a huge chunk of land. If you're in, in central you know, Seattle, it could be basically, you know, as you see on the on the left hand side, there could be just a part of the city or part, smaller parts of the city. So in Europe, depending on the population and the number of players' teams, it usually is a part of the whole country. So we will see examples from France, and we will see examples from Czech Republic, and also have an example here from Sweden that how, how we did when we divided the uh, uh, the leagues into, well, actually the country into different leagues. So I'm just going to give a quick example of Sweden. We, we, we chose to divide Sweden into four leagues, the north, the south, uh, the, the middle, and Stockholm. And we only had four to five teams or clubs per league. And, and that, coin, that actually coincided with how our sports administrative regions were set up. But in hindsight, we, we should have looked at the number of youth players instead, and maybe just instead of having four leagues, we should maybe have maximum two or three leagues get a better foundation of the program. So if it's anybody lo lo listening to this uh, recording later and thinking about joining Little League, contact Beata. Her contact information will be at the end or contact myself and we'll try to work with you to find what's appropriate for your country or for your program. So if we were to go to Denmark and do the same thing, they could choose what would work best for, for their program. Usually we say it's, it's better to have at least two leagues. We don't want to have the whole country as one league, but usually two leagues or more, depending on the number of teams. And when you reg when they register with the league, before you do that, you talk to Beata, because she will be you talk to somebody else within the league and establish a kind of a boundary map, which says that players within this uh, geographic area, they will belong to Denmark, you know, South Little League or West Little League. And the players in this area would be the Denmark North a little league. And you can have different boundaries for baseball and softball. Uh, I know that several of our countries do have that. It depends on what works best for your country and for your program. As long as you have a discussion with little league, anything is not anything, but most things are, are possible. So, so far we've done a bit about, about little league. We have talked about the age groups, uh, about the geographical boundaries. Um, I've seen our questions so far, so I'm going to ask if um, Wojtek um, 
could uh, unmute himself and talk a bit about how Czechia does the thing with with their uh, little league. And just let me know, Wojtek, when you when you're ready to move to the next slide, and I'll do my best to accommodate you. Okay. Hey, hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am the district administrator for Czech Republic. And uh, Christian asked me to do a little presentation about our use case in Czech Republic. Uh, Christian, I might uh, request a remote control. So if it works for you, just uh, uh, approve it for me and I might be able to uh, move it myself. But let's see if it, this works. Um, all right, so uh, Czech Republic uh, has moved in uh, in the past uh, to the winter program, which is kind of a unique uh, for Little League uh, in terms of uh, well, coming from the United States and, and doesn't really make sense to play in the winter, especially in uh, states where there's no winter at all. But in our country, we have a lot of a uh, lot, lot of time. We have so we have uh, like a cold temperature, so we're looking for some other, uh, you know, thinking out of the box. So with our D, uh, our core, uh, core things. Okay, so it says I'm controlling, but I don't know how. So you might move it, Christian, please. Okay, sure. <clears throat> So we were started, uh, okay, so I think we have. I think you have to uncontrol me. Up. So, okay, I'm give, I'm giving up, and now you're going to, yeah, now we're moving. Uh, now I got control, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, we have used the core principles of Little League, and we apply it to our environment. Uh, and the thing was that, Traditionally, we have this club system like most of the European countries, but we were trying to think about something new and we create a winter project where we are opening the registra registration for every, like for a single player, which means everybody from a country registered within the Federation, not registered within the Federation, doesn't really matter, can apply to be a part of the winter program. The logic behind this is that we, uh, if we open this for clubs, many times they won't have enough players to fulfill the teams. So we have decided let's do it for a smaller number of uh, uh, interested players. And the ideal, uh, the the idea behind was one uh, one car. So let's say one car has a driver and four players. So the idea was to bring, uh, let's say, up to four people from. Um, uh, from a region for or from somewhere where the club is, but, but let's say small club, and bring them in and put them on a teams and play, you know, during uh, during winter. So we solved by moving to the winter program. We solved the problem with the club season. So we have no uh, no obstacles now uh, against the club season. So clubs are pretty much okay because uh, uh, we are concluding our little league uh, pretty much at the beginning of the club season um, the next thing we have learned and we were used is the business uh, concept of the the leagues in United States well the idea is that the the, the league is doing its own uh, budgeting and its own spendings you know and running the whole show by the small unit. So we have decided we, we want to construct this project as a business uh, project. And later later in the presentation, you will see that finally we uh, find a way how to run it as a business, uh, yeah. even in a nonprofit organization. Uh, and of course, uh, what we like, uh, but it's hard to follow is the democratic principles. So. Uh, selecting the all-star team or or uh, voting for the league president and even voting for a players for a tournament team slash all-star team is something we were we are trying to you know uh, hold and and we're trying to have it as a value of the little league because sometimes you can see some um you know um influences that 
you know some some powerful people wants to do it their their way but this is not the case we are trying to keep it uh still on the dem democratic principles and vote players into the all-star team and of course the 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 manager and and coaches and the league president and and all the structure next one please I just added the the beautiful picture that you sent from the, yeah. So here you can see we're using these pennies, and every team has a different uh, uh, color as a, uh, the penny color. So we basically have you know pink, green, uh, blue, red, and more teams at one place. So those kids can bring their you know common gear and 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 um, you know clothing, and they just use this penny. To, to play for a team where they are assigned, but they are assigned for the same team for the whole season. That's that's a, another key key uh, principle. Next one. Okay, so the, the the key thing for us was to you know use the the, the principles like I said, and and uh, building the independent community, uh, meaning we have people from all the clubs of from Czech Republic in our softball project is what you know we we feel is is the great value of the program so our little leaguers they 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 are not thinking about their clubs when they are playing little league they are thinking about little league which is the great thing and of course it's it's bringing a great you know uh um results like new friendship people those players they know each other across those clubs so we are kind of a um we're kind of a um you know softening the club uh rivality rivality in uh, in in the country by this project which we feel is is a great thing to create you know more more values for the, the program like little league um securing the balance level of teams is another key principle so we are running those drafts so let's say uh those players will apply they will show up at the first uh winter uh, tournament and we run the draft and we are trying to split them uh, equally in you know teams for how many teams we have players so if 36 players will show up we're gonna create three teams yellow green red whatever but we are running the draft before we split them to make those teams equal another key principle because without that it would end up by you know having one very strong team and most likely a very weak team and it it would not be a fun anymore so the draft procedure for us is another key principle how to operate a mandatory play rule which basically says that every player who show up has to play under uh, you know specific rules another key principle for us works great and it's it's like a must uh, for everybody because this keeps people with playing little league. They nobody wants to be on a bench. So if they're if we apply if I, if we are enforcing mandatory play rule, it works perfectly for everybody. Um, yeah, we have used the little league resources like uh, little league university, and we use the little league winter uh, tournaments for umpires development on our local level. So umpires development for us is some, it's like an extra bonus for us because now we have something where new umpires can, you know, practice during the winter and they have a, they have a, uh, they're gaining the experience. Um, the good thing is that Lily doesn't really limit us to, uh, you know, adjust uh, rules. So of course we play indoors, so we have to, you know, uh, have rules for hitting the ceiling. Uh, uh, but also, for example, adding the machine pitch, which we are doing, which is speeding up the game tremendously. So like machine pitch in certain categories for us is another uh, way for success because the game is, you know, it has more, uh, it, it's faster and it has better pace and uh, everybody likes it. So machine pitch, we are using that a lot and it works very good, even with the softy, softy, um, um, you know, ball for indoors. Uh, and yes, the the Lille League tournament play, which is the uh, regional tournament, and 
World Series is a is a big uh, or like the the you know crucial motivation for all the little leaguers, of course, around the world. But from my point of view, for us, finally, it's like on the background because those people probably would play little league even without the World Series. And I will show you that on our boys program because we recently opened the boys program and boys has in softball, the boys has no uh, World Series so far. So we believe we have a strong project which uh, can exist even without the World Series, which is, I would say, quite uh, challenging. Uh, next, please. Yeah, uh, this is a little um, graph. So you can see that we have started with this Winter Leagues in 2016. This is the number of registered players. Of course, we have volunteers. I will talk about it later. So the volunteers are pretty much parents uh, of those players. And uh, we were worried very much after COVID year. And you can see 2021, uh, it's a winter 2020 to 2021, no show because of COVID. But um, we are doing great right now. And you can see for 2024, we have 900 registered players to play Little League uh, in winter, which uh, for us, it's a great success. Next one. Well, the this is the project milestones. I want to add it, um, you know, to give you an idea how was the, you know, the process. So we have started with four leagues or we, we have started in 2015, 2016, opening just the four leagues, uh, the, the classic one, major, junior, senior, and at that time, a big league for softball. Um, uh, however, not 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 all of them were you know um full and for us we have started with 36 people uh to play the league and uh it was like real beginning in 2018 when the project gets bigger we have decided to hire the project manager to run and grow the project which was a great which was a great um great move because this guy uh, he proposed two things. First of all, he he proposed to redesign the softball regions, uh, which we which we did in 2020, and I recommend this to everybody because I think Christian had it in his presentation already. You know, balancing the uh, your leagues in your country is a key for success because all uh, if if you if you do it properly or if you if you if you do it you know uh, successfully. All the regions will feel they are competitive to the other regions. So what we did, we have this Prague, the, the capital is very strong in softball. So we just uh, counted the number of players that we have registered within the federation. And we decided we will do this little but strong uh, region in Prague, which is the one which is yellow. And then you can see the red one is pretty much the rest of the Bohemia. Uh, part of the, the 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 Czech Republic, and this region is pretty big, but it in at the end of the day they can, you know, match the level of the play of Prague. Same thing with Moravia, which is the blue one. So, changing the regions, which is uh, possible to have different regions for baseball and different regions for softball, but generally speaking, changing the regions was. Uh, you know, like the best move what what we what we did because the competitive competitiveness uh, uh, gets bigger and everybody everybody's motivation uh, is higher since then. Then our new project manager started to open under eleven, under ten, and under nine little leagues in winter. Another you know key step or milestone in within this project because uh, you know those kids in this uh, age, uh, they have a huge support from their parents. So it's very easy to get uh, you know volunteers uh, to under 11 or under 10 league because basically one kid is at least one parent, which is great. Um, then after COVID, like I said, we, expanded to the boys community which is pretty much very strong in czech republic uh, softball and now we have under 13 and under 15 
leagues or programs and they are full uh, and we are running this to for boys too which like i said it, it shows that it has uh, something more than only going to the world series and since 2024 we have hired a full-time project manager and this project manager is here in the call his name uh, her name is lucy foretova and uh, she will be paid by the project revenues so our business model comes finally to the um to you know success financially too you can go next this was actually your last slide uh, oh, okay so i i would just uh, add that you know the the idea is that everybody pays the fee that's the business model behind so everybody pays the fee to enter the league the fee goes to the federation and federation is running the show uh, so basically Lucy is responsible for booking all the gyms you know scheduling uh, communication uh, all kinds of stuff and also you know collecting the fees the, the very beginning idea was that we need 36 players to open the league uh, for two reasons. Uh, 36 players could create three teams by 12, which is a nice league to start. And 36 players has enough um, uh, economic power to pay for renting the, uh, the gym. And we have started with the six hour blocks to, you know, play around Robin with the six days during the winter. So six days by, you know, uh, two games a day, which is 12, which was in rules of the, the Little League. So we fulfill this by, um, you know, uh, by scheduling those days. And uh, in our country, and I understand this could be different in different uh, places around uh, across uh, Europe, we we could run it um, uh, with, uh, uh, you know, 36 players paid for for a, a gym rent at the beginning. And the rest was uh, about, uh, you know, the rest was carried by the volunteers. And the last thing, how to get volunteers involved. Believe it or not, in our country, we have a magic word, which is discount. So uh, once we uh, offered a discount for a kit fee for a parent volunteer, everything clicked up and we were successful on recruiting the volunteers too, because for whatever reason, they like discounts. So discount was another key for success uh, in our case to, you know, have those coaches and, you know, uh, people who, who are um, setting up the field and organize teams and all kinds of stuff. So that's pretty much it from my side. I am open um, for any questions and uh, we can offer you uh, also the, you know, uh, financial models, models for us. It's not a, it's not a big deal. We, we are open to share and, um, since we have enough players, you know, we we can run it more efficiently and uh, we are gaining revenue and, and we can uh, pay our project manager out of the revenue, which is a great success. Thank you. Thank you, Wojtek. Um, I have one we'll question. Need... Sure. Wojtek, so how much your player pays for the season, for this winter season? Uh, I know we started with... Uh, 1,500 crowns, but in 2016. So now I have to ask my manager, Lucy, how much is in it In euros, now? please. <laughs> in euros. So we will we'll put it in a chat. We will we'll okay. put the chat together and we will, uh, we will uh, send it in a chat in euros. Okay? Thank you. Perfect. And, and Voita, I do apologize. I realized when you talked about the number of players and the business model that I did actually forget one of your slides. So uh, that, that's that's on me. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really great way, an example of how you can do something that works better for your country. Um, and I would say this is a huge success. If the plan was to have 36 players and you're now at 900 plus, it's, it's, it's a huge success and a great way of, of organizing it uh, in, in a different way. Um, Francois, 
Um, it's uh, I would like to hear from. We have a presentation as well from Little League France, uh, who has done how they do the uh, the Little League uh, event in, in France. Sure, no problem. Um, what you see there on on the image on the right is the administrative region of France, and I'm showing that because that's uh, uh, one of the major changes we had with Little League France over the last year. To change the structure of the leagues to the to adapt to the new administration uh, regional bodies, which is the same as we have at the French Federation. Uh, I'm just uh, emphasizing on on what uh, Wojtek said that the league definition is really crucial on what you want to do in the program. Can you get to the next slide, please? Yes. So same idea as Wojtek. Some core principle of what we do with the Little League program in France. So first of all. Um, um, the main idea is that Little League is just a major opportunity for player, parents, coaches, and officials to live new experience on top of what the Federation already provides, and and both nationally and internationally. And per, in that regard, participation is encouraged, but not mandatory. So we run Little League as a sub-program of the French Federation Youth Development Activities. And uh, activities are organized at the national and regional level. Uh, and as I said, the all leagues are the regions in France. And not at the club level, because for us, it was easier to run a program together with 13 organizations instead of 185 clubs that we have in France. So that was a restructure of uh, what we did, and, and this helped us uh, um, uh, be more efficient on what we were doing with Little League. <laughs> and also, uh, a big decision we had is that all activities we would run with Little League, not in the winter, we do in summer, but definitely would not be uh, um, in competition with what we do with club level activities and regular competitions we have in France. So there is no conflict of schedules between what we do with Little League and what we do with our traditional uh, club activities. Thank you, thank you, Christian. So as I said, one of the major steps we had over the last years was to reshape our uh, league boundaries to um, uh, adapt to the French administration reform because in France we went to from 22 to 13 regions and we thought that was a real uh, a good way to run with the literary program because those regions were kind of appropriate in terms of population and 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 numbers to be able to run correctly the program. Um, there was also a nomination of DA, a new DA to run the program. Um, uh, a staff, by the way, because it was more easier for France to be effective and efficient if they had a, a paid staff. So that's why I'm the DA for France, because I'm an employee of the French Federation and I, I have time to work on that uh, and, and can be more focused than, than the volunteer that we had in the past volunteers that were not always available uh, uh, and could not be as efficient as we wanted with this program. So that was really a um, a priority set by the Federation to be able to uh, partner with Little League and deliver a, a, a forward program with the uh, uh, Little League. So we work with a, a specific group of key actors uh, inside the Federation, for instance, the heads of, of youth and empowering commissions to be able to articulate correctly between traditional activities and Little League uh, um, activities. And this youth commission and parent commissions together with the DA and the leagues work on tournament allocation and tuition programs for officials, especially Empire. So we are sure we are able to run properly our, our tournaments. We also, that was a big change and, and a, a major step for us in, in the promotion of the program to make sure everybody was aware and willing to be involved was the creation of a, a, a specific identity for the program. So we created a, a French Little League uh, logo and produced a lot of uh, um, materials and goodies to be able to distribute to players so we could uh, uh, better communicate on the program and, and, and get a good footprint with the players and coaches about what we were doing. Um, 
and major changes, last major change we did uh, the last year was to change the way we were running one of our major events, the interleague events, to create a, a super massive uh, little league event every year, an annual tournament. I will talk about that later. Um, which which we think was the we thought was the best way to uh, um, communicate on the program and provide opportunities for players, coaches, and parents to be involved in the Little League program. So actually, this is our biggest event in the EFLBS calendar, and just all together, this is the most played and most popular event at all with youth baseball in France. Here in the picture, you see how many teams we have. So um, this was, I think, two years ago in Brittany. Uh, we had 22 teams. And this year, we even broke the record because we had 20 teams and, and even one from Corsica, uh, where we just created a new league. So this is a super massive event and a real festive sharing uh, event that gather players from all around France for three days events. It's, it's really... Uh, for us, the spirit of Little League, providing youth and coaches to with an opportunity to travel, to play against different kind of people, uh, share their experience, and live uh, uh, unforgettable uh, moments. Uh, part of the branding and communication we did was also, for instance, providing uh, patches for the jerseys, uh, goodies such as pins, and stuff like that, but also produce the traditional Little League banners. Uh, and just everything we did was just to be able to uh, have a better identification of Little League and the activities we did. So those teams could also bring uh, Little League stuff, Little League memories with them. Of course, memories of what they did on the field of play, but also concrete uh, memories uh, that could they, they could bring it on, like the medals and, and the banners. Um, so a focus on, on the main Little League event we have. So this Little League event every year, is, it's, um, it's being played at the end of August every year. And there's a specific hall in the FFBS calendar. So there's no other events. And, and it's just one big event we have uh, uh, at the end of the summer before schools restart. Three days, two tournaments. So we have a baseball major and baseball senior. We're working on the on the Sobol events, which we have difficulties to 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 create. Beata knows about that, but we want to we want to do it. But uh, the numbers are just not enough as for nine friends. We play with adapted rules, to be honest, because uh, we have the French Federation rules and there are the Little League rules, and we kind of created an in-between to be able to match the spirit of Little League uh, and, and rules like the mandatory play. But also be in line with the reality of of the play in France, because some some kind of some distances, some some the, the balls, for instance, we use some some of the items, some of the rules of Little League just cannot be matched with the reality of French baseball. So we created specific environments in between FABS and Little League. We also provide the teams with a guaranteed number of games because it's really important. We saw that over the years that. As those people are all traveling and paying everything by themselves, uh, they need to feel like they play enough. They need to play competitive games, of course, but they need to be able to play at least three or four games, otherwise they don't come. So that's that's really something important. And in that regards, we created a competition system that allows us to guarantee a certain amount of games to to every team to make sure that uh, they are all happy and come home with a, with a great experience. League teams in these competitions are made of all stars from the region and they're chosen by their coaches uh, based on tryouts. So depending on the leagues, they do two, three, four camps and tryouts. Each leagues, I mean, organize uh, what they want the way they want. They're just, they're just bringing all star. Um, and, and the coaches are being chosen by the league uh, board of directors, which is made of the clubs from, from the region. So, for instance, if uh, if the Britain League has 13 clubs, they will gather and they will decide who will be the coaches of the team. And then the coaches will organize a, a selection process for the players that are going to be invited to play to this event. Um, officials 
uh, are also coming from the leagues, but they are uh, also chosen uh, by the French uh, Empiring Commission to make sure we have a sufficient level. And we run, uh, we, we are running a teaching program because uh, we decided to uh, use the Little League program as a new opportunity for empires to uh, get, get experience and get the opportunity to empire at the international level. I mean, international level with WBC Europe slash WBC competitions provide just a few opportunities for empire to be able to uh, officiate in uh, uh, World Cups or European Championships. So Little League was a new major opportunity for some of our uh, really motivated and good empires to officiate and be able to go to uh, European uh, Africa tournament or even World Series. And this year we were lucky enough to have our first French empire invited to a, to a World Series. So this is also some kind of new opportunities for empires uh, 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 to be able to uh, stay motivated and, and, and officiate at the international event. <clears throat> and the results of these events, these major events, gathering all our leagues, uh, determine the participation rights to Little League events. So, as I said, we only have two age categories. So what we do, because Little League has four, as Christian mentioned, is that the winner of one category gets to choose in which event you want to go between the two categories that are crossing those age threshold. Like, for instance, the the winner of the major category can decide if the year after they go to major or they go to intermediate. And then the runner-up of the event can participate to the other age category. That's how we do it. Also, because as we are working on different years, because um, teams that played in 2023 are qualified for 2024 events, and sometimes uh, they change age brackets. So we provide the, the league with the opportunity to keep having the same team in the Little League events the year after by, for instance, choosing uh, intermediates instead of major. <clears throat> uh, and also be why, we, why we did that and we did not qualify the league the same year as the Little League events is because leagues don't have a lot of money and we want to be able to provide them with time to be able to uh, uh, gather funding and run sponsorship program to be able to uh, travel to those international events. And just some just key numbers I just talked about, we have more than 300 players during those events, 50 coaches and, and almost 100 officials. So it's really a, a super massive and really festive event, good for sharing experience and knowledge about the game. Thank you so okay. much, Francois. That's about and it. What, one of the great things I think that you did was that you focused on, on, on two tournaments. Uh, the baseball major, which is essentially the under 12 uh, regular program, and also the, the baseball senior, which is essentially the under 15 age group that we have here in Europe. So, Well, it's always an issue because uh, we have talks about uh, um, adapting to the Little League age categories, but we just don't have the, the numbers in terms of participation. So we thought that sticking with the traditional WBC Euro category, which are the one that we use for traditional club competitions uh, uh, with FFBS activity, was better to stick like that and just provide opportunity for leagues to choose then when they want, when, when they want to go international. Uh, so yeah, we decided to focus on, on two events instead of four to be able to guarantee the participation and not have like a, a, a major tournament with only four teams and an, an intermediate with three teams. So maybe, I mean, that's one of the goal, for, of course, is to get more members, more teams, and to be able to organize more events. But also we, we face a reality in France is that those leagues are made of volunteers and they don't have a lot of funding. So uh, if we don't, we, we cannot just ask them to bring three, four or five teams. They wouldn't be able to do it financially also. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing, Francois. Um, I have a few more slides to go through uh, with this presentation, so um, I'm going to run right, right along here. Um, the chat is open. I see that we have some discussions there um, and some advice, so so feel free to, to join in those discussions while, while we keep on here. Um, the, the I'm going to talk a little bit about the district administrator, which is if you're going to start a little league program in your country, the, the key thing is to have the 
relationship between the federation and Little League and, and the key person there is the district administrator. I am one, Francois and the Wojtek, who I've spoken to earlier, are, are two other for their countries. The, the success of cooperation between Little League and National Federation is crucial for the growth and success. So the most important role being the DA should be somebody with, with knowledge and support of the local program, a good judgment and personality. Hopefully we have that. <laughs> um, and ability to learn and understand the Little League rules and see how you can implement them locally in a way. And you see two great examples here of how, how, how they've done it in Czech Republic and France. And when you do that, it's, it's always a discussion with Little League. It's always a discussion between Little League and Federation as well. But they also always have a district administrative training program, which gives newly appointed DAs an opportunity to learn more about the role from the Little League perspective. So as long as you have good knowledge about your country's program, uh, Little League will, will do everything in its power to learn to learn more about the Little League program from the other end. So the DA serves as the liaison, as I said before, between the local program and the region and should have the support of the, of the National Federation, usually becomes an elected position. Um, every two years, uh, Little League hosts a European roundtable where these district administrators meet and discuss some you know, rule changes or other issues, how to grow our leagues. We have our next meeting in, in Warsaw and at the end of January for, for all of our European district administrators. And every four years, we organize the International Congress, which I talked about before. And that's the place where more than a thousand Little League DAs, volunteers from all over the world gather in one location um, to discuss ideas, listen to seminars, get more knowledge and vote on rule changes. And the next time that we have the International Congress, it will be in 2026, and it will be in Indianapolis for those who are appointed DAs for, for the respective uh, countries. The Little League Tournament is up next, and uh, this is a, an important thing, as both uh, Francois and Wojtek have talked about. But everything starts in the local program, in the local, you know, local community. And it dance like for these boys, it's the World Series parade in, in downtown Williamsport, Pennsylvania at the World Series. But it always starts at the league place locally. So that, that is the key thing when I say it's not a national team program. We have a key thing in Little League and it must play to advance. So everything starts in the local league, in the respective country where, where clubs teams play each other. They have to have a schedule of 12 games or more. So for a for a player to, to be part of uh, this tournament team, of these 12 games, the players usually have to play eight, at least eight games to make sure that you don't cherry pick players. They have to be part of the continuous uh, grassroots program in the country, which you can solve in different ways like the Czech Republic and France have, have shown here. So from the league, it goes to the district championship. So basically, the respective leagues, they can choose to have like a playoff thing or they can choose an all-star team. And then they will play the uh, series for the Little League championship for the country uh, or the event that Francois talked about for France or the finals of the uh, Czech Indoor uh, Winter League. And those winners of the national tournaments can then represent that country's Little League in the, in the different uh, European region tournaments. And from the region, European region tournaments, the winners in each region tournament is invited to participate in the Little League World Series in the United States. And it's all expenses paid for the uh, team that goes, including the coaches when it comes to traveling, lodging, and food. So it's, 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 a, it's a huge uh, event. And it starts, as I said, in the local league. When it comes to the Little League tournament in Europe uh, for 2024, all of these tournaments are qualifiers for uh, Little League World Series in the different age groups. Um, so for baseball, uh, Little League tournament will be in Kutno, Poland. 
and the winner there will advance to the Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Uh, for the intermediate 50-70 program, those of the league ages 11 to 13, it will be in Diablo Netsch in Czechia, and the winner there will advance to the World Series in Livermore, California. For the Junior League Baseball, it will be in Chosen, Czechia, and the winner there will go to the World Series in Taylor, Michigan. And for the Senior Leagues, they will play in Novara, Italy, and the winner there will go to the uh, Little League Senior League World Series in Eastly, South Carolina. As for the uh, softball events, the Little League softball uh, tournament will be in Kutno, Poland. And the winner there will go to the Little League Softball World Series, which will be in Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, for Junior League, it will be in Ostrava, Czech Republic. And the winner there will go to the uh, Junior League World Series in Kirkland, Washington. And for the Senior Leagues, they will be at the same location in Ostrava. So Ostrava will host two tournaments at the same time for players from 12 to 16. And the Senior League winners will go to the World Series in Lower Sussex in Delaware. Except for the, for the tournament experience, there's also an, a huge thing with being associated with Little League, and this education, education and training. So Little League has their own university. Um, it's an online education tool for both coaches, parents, umpires, league officials. Um, ISDA has a lot have a lot of courses that I have to attend during the course of a season, which is always available at my own online site. And this uh, Little League University also has a complete 10-week uh, T-ball program curriculum, which is about 72 pages of how to have a T-ball program, and it's directed to parents. So inexperienced coaches, which is parents here in Europe, to, to make them feel comfortable in how could I be a coach uh, for kids age four to seven. It's a complete with different manuals, uh, uh, drills, everything, a whole setup of, of how to make uh, have a successful T-ball program. So that's one of the resources that Little League has when it comes to education and training. Um, the other one, which is a really important one, is the Diamond Leader Program. And this is more um, centered on making sure that we have a, a an experience for the kids that are positive on and off the field. Uh, it, it provides the coaches with an understanding of the impact the mental, social, emotional well-being has on youth sports. It's both detailed information, some scenarios of this happens during practice, how should we react to it? And then variety of uh, additional resources as well. It's something that we put a lot of resources in. And it's something I think that is it's really important for us when it comes to making sure that the kids who come to our, into our sports have a good experience uh, on and off the field, uh, especially when it comes to the mental, social, and emotional well-being. Now, the last few slides here I'm going to show um, are about the Little League WBSC Europe Agreement. Um, I will not show... I had the timeline uh, when it comes to this. I'm not, I'm not going to show that because it's not quite finalized yet. But we can say we, we did sign an agreement between Little League and WBC Europe in, in London in, in June of 2023. It, it gives stronger ties between Little League and the national federations. Uh, one important thing uh, is that in order to have a little, when you're registered with Little League, each team has to play a $10 charter fee, about ish 10 euros, I guess, for us who doesn't have euros in Sweden. Um, but it's it's capped, so it doesn't matter how many how many teams you register from your country. The country itself can never pay more than one hundred fifty euros. So this is also one of these things that will we do in order to make sure that we register all of the teams from the different clubs. Now, if Sweden usually registers between twenty and twenty four teams, usually we have to pay. 2,000, uh, 200 to 240 euros uh, for the season. Now it's capped to 150, just to encourage us to shock all the teams that we have. And we also have a develop umpire development plan with opportunities to participate in the Europe Africa tournaments and the World Series tournaments annually in this agreement. And 
the the big thing here when we talked about the 700 teams that we hope to have is from from Europe is that from the summer of 2024 um little league will as, as long as we have 700 registered teams from Europe to little league uh, little league will make uh, development funds available to WBSE Europe um and those funds will be distributed through the WBC Europe Development uh, Committee, which Petra is sharing. And they will be directed to, just example, feed development or promotion opportunities, like the one that Francois talked about. Things that will get, help the uh, clubs uh, increase participation in, in youth baseball and softball. But if we do not reach 700 teams in Europe, we will not get any funding for this. And I can say that if we do reach 700 teams, the amount that we will get is $30,000. So for us, it is, it's pretty important for us to, to have these kind of figures uh, within the European continent to make sure that we can get these resources and make sure that we can grow the game in, even further in youth baseball and softball. So we don't have the timeline finished yet. Um, what we don't know is that we will have indication of how many teams we have uh, registered with, with the Little League in Europe. We will have that in usually in, in May, maybe early June. So hopefully in May, June, we will, we will, by June 1st, we will have an idea of how many teams do we have in Europe and will we get the thirty thousand dollars for our, you know, the development initiatives. So we will try to form a timeline to make sure that we can prepare these documents, prepare these um, requests. I would guess Petra, in, in lieu of any other kind of uh, understanding on it, and and make sure that we have a timeline so that we have to request by this date, pending uh, the agreement that we actually have the numbers. And then hopefully we will be able, as soon as we know that we do get the money to WBC Europe, we, we should be able to distribute them pretty quickly, uh, probably in, in July of, of next year. Do you have something to add there before I continue, Petra? Uh, no, no. So timeline, we will, we will share it during the uh, Congress anyway, for sure, that yeah. everybody knows when is going on what for the requests. Exactly. So I would just try to skip past a, a preliminary timeline really quickly like that. <laughs> so if, if, if you're listening to this and if you or if you're listening to the recording and you think, how, how can I join Little League with my club? Well, the first thing is if, if your country, if, if your country or your federation that you're in, if they are already shot with Little League, um, you should contact your country's district administrator. If you don't know who that person is, you should contact Beata Kashuba Baker with uh, Little League Europe Africa. If your country is not registered with, with Little League, you should take contact with your national federation and schedule an online meeting with Beata or myself or both uh, to get some more information and to get some more best practices on how to move forward uh, You know, with your ideas of, of having Little League. Uh, and I do know that some of the countries that are here today, uh, you don't have um, Little League right now, but I had talks with those uh, countries before to, to get them chartered. And I do know that we have some people from Sweden here and we are chartered with Little League. So for you, it's just to contact me and I will, will help you set it up. And for the benefit of you all, uh, there's more information at the, at the website that's described on this slide. And on the next slide, you have some contact information when it comes to mail addresses to the people. Um, so if you have a, if you have any questions for, for about Little League Europe Africa or Little League in, in total, you should contact Beata Kashuba Baker. Uh, Beata, I really hope that this is the co correct email address to you. If not, a bar to somebody will have to speak up. Um, if you have questions about this presentation or how we did it in Sweden, you can always contact me. Uh, my email address is there as well. If you have any questions about the WBSC Europe development, you should contact Petra. There was also email addresses here on the list. Um, 
before I wrap it out, I'd like to ask, I would like to ask Beara, do you have anything that, that you'd like to add to this or any, any quick comments? Yes, I, uh, I wanted to thank you, Petra and Christian, for hosting this uh, meeting. It's great information. Uh, thank you very much. And thanks to Wojtek and Francois for sharing their uh, information about their programs. Um, on the international side in Little League, um, we need to be creative and use... Uh, pick and choose Little League resources and adopt that to our situation. So there's a lot of flexibility and creativity that we have to do. Uh, so I would encourage everyone new to Little League, and even if you're not new, um, a place to start is the Little League website. There are so many resources, so many new initiatives that are being developed all the time. So if you go to literally.org uh, and you start exploring, it's never ending. So I would encourage everyone to get ideas uh, about the program there. Um, a lot of um, a lot of it is developed for the US market. Um, that's why we can't just take it and we don't want to take it directly as is and in, try to implement in our countries. But uh, we, we can just get ideas and, and be creative with it. So like I said, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, we are always uh, an email away if you need uh, advice, information or or uh, if you have questions, so feel free to contact us, any of us. So thank you very much. And before we wrap this up, I'd like to also like to thank uh, Wojtek and Francois for sharing their um, experiences. Um, Petra, I think that we will have, during the Congress that we have in uh, February, we will have another kind of, some kind of seminar information. with yeah. information about Little League. And I would guess that somewhere after the Congress, we will also maybe have a follow-up seminar on this, you know, online for, for those people who can't attend the Congress as well. I'm just assuming here, so. Yeah, we can do so, that for sure. <laughs> so with that said, um, thank you very much for, for taking time out of the day to be here. Um, I'm going to keep the email addresses here uh, for a few more seconds if you want to write them down. And uh, I appreciate you all taking the time to be here. And again, contact us if there's anything that we can, you know, do to help you understand more about Little League and how we can benefit from it in WBC Europe. So thank you so much. Thank you everybody for coming and thank you, Christian, on great presentation and Voita and Francois, perfect one. So many information. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye, thank you. Bye.